Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dario Health. Manage your blood glucose levels, increase your possibilities. By Gvoke Hypopen, the first pre-mixed auto-injector for very low blood sugar. And by Dexcom. Take control of your diabetes and live life to the fullest with Dexcom. This is Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. This week, lots of people get a diabetes diagnosis themselves or in their family, and they create a product or write a book or invent something to help others. Adam and Celeste Litt took a broader view. I just see all kinds of different really cool stuff out there. And I think that's part of the magic as well, Stacey, is there's so many questions out there. What is the solution for this? How can I help this? And you get shipped to all these different places and sites. It's not really in one place, and people don't always really know where to go. Adam was diagnosed with LADA a few years ago. He and Celeste joined me to talk about their marketplace for T1D products and services called the Useless Pancreas. In Tell Me Something Good, lots of teens and young adults with new jobs and a bunch of sports milestones to brag about. This podcast is not intended as medical advice. If you have those kinds of questions, please contact your healthcare provider. Welcome to another week of the show. Always so glad to have you along. We aim to educate and inspire about diabetes with a focus on people who use insulin. My son, Benny, was diagnosed with type 1 right before he turned 2 more than 14 years ago. My husband lives with type 2 diabetes. I don't have any kind of diabetes, but I have a background in broadcasting, and that is how you get the podcast. And Adam Litt, who I'm talking to this week, we connected many, many years ago. Well, it was a one-way connection because Adam used to listen to me on the radio. And it was just funny to think about how, you know, things like that kind of come full circle. As I always say for the start of every show, you know, I have a background in broadcasting. Here I live in Charlotte, North Carolina. I worked in radio here for 10 years. I hosted a radio morning show, Charlotte's Morning News, the city's top rated morning news show. Basically, I got up in the middle of the night and got to work by four o'clock in the morning to go on at five for four hours a day trapped in a box with a couple other guys. And we had a great time and I loved that job. But after 10 years of getting up at 2.33 o'clock in the morning, um, I definitely had had enough. But talking to Adam just reminded me about that connection that you have with your listeners when you do a job like that. You know, he commuted into Charlotte and listened every day. And my son, Benny, was born in 2004, and I was on the radio at that time. So my listeners went through all of that with me. And then they went through his diagnosis with me. So he knew the story well before the podcast. It just took me back because I was very lucky to have the career that I really always dreamed about having when I was a kid. I worked in radio first, part-time, And then I I worked in television for more than 10 years as a local reporter and anchor. Then came that decade in Charlotte doing radio. And then, you know, it's funny, I really have spent almost the last 10 years, and I hadn't realized it, I left the radio station at the very end of 2012. And I did some freelance work. I worked as a multimedia journalist. It's really a one-man band. You know, you're shooting your own stuff for about a year after that, just for health insurance. But I've been on my own running my own business for a long time. And I hadn't realized how long until I talked to Adam and we figured out when he must have listened to me. I don't miss getting up in the middle of the night. And I I don't miss uh, some of the nonsense of working at a radio station like the one I was at. And that's another long story. I do feel extremely grateful to have been able to kind of create this radio job for myself and to be able to serve you and, and do this and have listeners all this time. We're coming up on six years this summer. And every time I get a little uh, radio reminder like that, I just want to take a moment and be thankful. So I really appreciate having you here. All right. We will talk to Adam in just a moment and his wife, Celeste. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Givo Hypopen. And you know, almost everyone who takes insulin has experienced a low blood sugar. And that can be scary. A very low blood sugar is really scary. And that's where Givo Hypopen comes in. Givo is the first auto injector to treat very low blood sugar. Givo Hypopen is pre-mixed and ready to go with no visible needle. That means it's easy to use. How easy is it? You pull off the red cap and push the yellow end onto bare skin and hold it for five seconds. That's it. Find out more. Go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the GVOC logo. GVOC shouldn't be used in patients with pheochromocytoma or insulinoma. Visit gvoclucagon.com slash risk. My guest this week saw a gap in the diabetes community. And like many of us, they jumped in to fill it. Adam Litt was diagnosed with LADA a few years after being initially misdiagnosed with type 2. 
If you're not familiar with LADA, it is latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. It's also called type 1.5. It presents a lot like type 2, but it's really type 1. It's just slower moving is a really good kind of basic definition of it. And I'll link up more information. We've done lots of episodes on LADA, but I like to explain it. You just, you know, you never know if this is somebody's first time hearing about it. Adam and his wife, Celeste, have started a new website. It's a marketplace for diabetes products called The Useless Pancreas. And I will link that up as well in the episode homepage. It is Useless Pancreas, all one word. Full disclosure, my book is listed as one of the products on that website, but they don't pay me any extra to list it there and no money exchanged hands for this interview. Adam and Celeste, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to talk to you today. Thanks so much for having us. Yes, thank you. Yeah, this is going to be fun. I have so much to ask you about our Charlotte connection and your website and, and the uselessness of everything that you're, <laughs> you're doing. But let's start at the beginning here, if we could. Adam, tell me about your diagnosis. Uh, sure, yeah, be, be happy to go into that. Stacy, so I was a, uh, a LADA uh, diagnosis, the uh, you know late onset uh, type, and uh, at first, and probably probably very similar to a, a lot of people's stories out there, I was uh, diagnosed as a, a type two, and uh, this was uh, around my uh, mid thirties. And and you know what, Stacy, after that, uh, they diagnosed me type two. I was a little pudgy, and I said, uh, yeah, I'm I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to work out. I'm going to get really fit. And um, when I lost weight, when I started losing weight, I started uh, losing weight at a pretty rapid rate where people started making some comments. They're like, well, you're, uh, you're getting reasonably uh, thin, probably a little you know, thinner than where you ought to be. And, and I blew this off. I, I completely disregarded it. You know, I had my A1Cs uh, checked for a couple of years and they were maintaining in the mid sixes. And, you know, everybody thought it was fine. And uh, but I kept getting healthier and healthier as far as weight control and diet and everything else. And it wouldn't budge. And then I went off to uh, Las Vegas with some friends. We uh, partied a little bit out there. And uh, a- after that, I came back. I-, I was feeling really bad the day after I came back, as you can imagine, from Las Vegas. And I went down in uh, my workplace to their sort of infirmary setup. And they took my sugar uh, because I was, again, a type 2 in their eyes. And it was 250. And uh, they said, you know, let's go ahead and, and check you out. And they, they looked, they found ketones. They're like, you're off to the hospital right now. Uh, and then, you know, after that, it was the typical story. You know, you go see the endo, you do the test, you get the diagnosis. My A1C somehow went from six and a half to, it was 10.5, I think, wow. for that uh, three-month period. So it was some rapid acceleration, uh, maybe, uh, you know, it was just time, I guess. So uh, anyway, and- um, It just you know, gave out. Then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Was it Las Vegas? Probably not. Well, it was also partly your birthday because your birthday it, it was there. It was my birthday. Yes. That was my, yeah. my diversity. Is that what they call them? Is, uh, his diversity is the day after his birthday. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. So there you go. So Celeste, so, uh, what, during this time, kind of what were you thinking? You know, 30s is young for type 2 to begin with, but it's not extraordinary. I mean, were you kind of thinking things were funky? You know, looking back on it, I... I think we saw signs and didn't recognize them up until that point. So it was a little scary. I mean, here I am with two young boys and, you know, thinking, oh, my goodness, now I have one more thing on my plate. <laughs> Adam sometimes c- refers to the diabetes as his third child. Yeah. <laughs> <I can relate. laughs> Adam, had you ever heard of Lada? No, I, I had no idea. As a matter of fact, when uh, my doctor uh, first threw out the term lot. I said, I, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, well, it's type one and a half. I said, what do you mean type one and a half? So I started looking all this up. And Stacey, you know, during this period where they do all the blood work, you know, you're just up every night and you're looking, what is lot? And I'm like, I hope it's not, not type two. My biggest fear at that time was, again, a type two. I was pretty well controlled. I had never had to prick myself at all to take my blood. And my biggest fear was, oh my gosh, are they going to come back and start telling me I have to test my blood sugar once or twice a day? And <laughs> whole different story now, but uh, yeah, we yeah. went through all that. It is funny what your initial thoughts are when you get that diagnosis, because we don't really have any idea, right? Unless you're in it. And Celeste, I ask you, because as you know, in many families, mom has a lot going on. I'm sure Adam is very responsible with his, as he calls it, his child, the third child there. But I'm, I'm curious too, when you heard he had Lada, what first went through your mind? Oh, wow. Like I said before, I feel like I was overwhelmed 
it was a change in our lifestyle. We actually had to take some time off to really figure out how to manage the type one diabetes and how to carry things around and how to deal with all the lows and the highs. And there was this learning curve at the very beginning that was uh, just very overwhelming for, for me, especially trying to manage and make sure that he was okay. He, he w- obviously wasn't on any Dexcom or any pump at this point. He would test his blood sugar and it would be really low. There were a couple of really scary moments at the very beginning where he had some 30s blood sugar levels. And just thinking also just about having to raise these kids by myself, there's always that thought in the back of your mind. And, and or am I going to wake up and find you know that he, he didn't make it to the night? I was constantly worried about him all night long and just during the day when he was away at work, things like that. Adam, did you know that? Did I know she was worried about me, Stacy? Well, to that extent. No, I no idea at all. It's nice to uh, to hear. She's always been a wonderful caretaker, and she carries around two liters for me, Stacy. Wherever we go, <laughs> you can always see the concern. Obviously, it did make me think, Stacy, of you know when I was first diagnosed. Though I remember I was sitting downstairs with one of these lows that she was talking about, and my older son, who who was still very young at the time. Gee, maybe, honey, he was what, like seven or eight at that time, something like that. He was looking down at those experiences, this, this low and shaking and trembling and not knowing what was going on. I remember this, uh, this vividly, and he didn't really know how to help me either. And that was actually a reasonably scary moment. It was all just brand new. So I'm glad we're, uh, you know, we've learned since then. Yeah. Are the kids kind of on board now? I mean, they're, they're tweens, I guess we could call them at this point. Uh, do they kind of, I'm sure they understand more and they, they're, you know, they can help out if needed. Sure do. When we, uh, when we go out to the uh, golf course, they, uh, you know, they pack Smarties in the bag and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, if daddy ever has a severe low, whatever it might be, they'll go and run and get the two liter. They'll pour it for me and they'll, uh, they'll stand by and make sure I'm all right. So uh, yeah, they're, they're good kids. I feel like we've been proactive about that and we've tried to prepare them a lot for how to handle an emergency situation. It's really important for me to continue getting them trained in first aid, CPR, and things like that on a regular basis. So as they get older, they're just, they feel confident enough to deal with a situation if it were to arise. What's the two liter? <laughs> the lemon lime soda. There you go. It's probably sitting on my desk over there. Do you see it? The, uh... <laughs> what is that, like store brand Sprite? Is that what I'm looking It's at? from Lidl. Yeah, it's Yeah, it's the cents. lemon lime soda. <laughs> Yeah, it works. It does a job. It's quick. It's funny, though, because I really feel like I should mention before we go any further that while you and I don't know each other, you have known kind of me since Benny was diagnosed because and this feels really weird to say, like, you listen to me on the radio. I mean, I don't say that to weirdly brag or anything, but it is funny how you have these connections with the diabetes community that when you are diagnosed or when your child is diagnosed, it's so nice to kind of, I know from my experience, I knew people before Benny was diagnosed is why I'm bringing it up. And I was able to say, oh my gosh, I remember, and I remember this kid, Evan, that I had met several years prior and he was this nice, normal, funny kid. And I was like, okay, my kid's going to be all right because I remember Evan is all right. And I'm curious, you know, you listened to WBT and we didn't talk about Benny all that much, but you do remember him having diabetes. I do. And I remember, I remember driving to the, the same company I still work for every morning and listening uh, to you and the crew on WBT. And I remember these sort of snippets and you would talk about Benny. And what I really heard come through, while I, I didn't fully understand, even though we do have a connection to the family, Stacy, right? I, I have a, a half brother uh, that was diagnosed at 12, but you know, he's, you know, he lives in New York and we talk whenever, but, but I, I didn't have a full understanding. But, but hearing what, what I heard is I heard the amount of emotion uh, that came through when you talked about it, right? And, and that's what I remember from those, uh, you know, those discussions that you were having and things like that. And, uh, you know, also, you know, the, the passion for uh, what you were doing in the community. So that, that really did resonate. And then, you know, so many years later, I'm diagnosed, I run across you again. I'm like, Stacy, and she's in the type one community. And here it is. I'm like, I have to go ahead and shoot her an email right now. And that's, that's what I did. And now we get to do this really cool talk. So yeah, we appreciate it. Oh, of course. Of course, Celeste. It's funny to think about that. Benny was so young. You know, I had him while I was working at WBT. So it's really funny to think about. When did you, and I'll, I'll ask Celeste, I'll start with you here. When did you all get the idea for the useless pancreas? How did that come about? Mm-hmm. 
Back to Celeste answering my question in just a moment. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dario Health. Bottom line, you need a plan of action with diabetes. We've been lucky that Benny's endo has helped us with that and that he understands the plan has to change as Benny gets older. You want that kind of support. So take your diabetes management to the next level with Dario Health. Their published studies demonstrate high-impact results for active users like improved in-range percentage within three months, reduction of A1C within three months, and a 58% decrease in occurrences of severe hyperglycemic events. Try Dario's Diabetes Success Plan and make a difference in your diabetes management. Go to mydario.com forward slash diabetes dash connections for more proven results and for information about the plan. Now back to Celeste and how they got the idea for the useless pancreas. Well, it was actually Adam's idea. Um, I was uh, visiting some relatives in Florida and I I left him at home that that visit. I brought the kids down. We visited the grandparents. I guess we've kind of talked about doing something for the type one community for some time, but we weren't quite sure where we fit in yet. And while I was gone in Florida, he was up here and, and it just kind of hit him. He was always on a lot of Facebook boards and things regarding diabetes to find the answers to his questions and to see what other people are going through. And a lot of times people always were wondering, well, where can I get this? And what is the solution for this uh, issue that I'm having? And so he came up with that idea. Well, you know what? Let's solve these problems. That's pretty much where we started from. And I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Adam, was there like a item that you were like an aha moment where you thought, oh my God, I need to do this? Yeah, there was. There actually was, Stacey. It's interesting. So yeah, Celeste left. I had quiet time. And I guess this is what I do in my quiet time. I just start thinking of things to keep myself busy. And uh, (laughs) so yeah, it was, um, you know, it's amazing because uh, the type one community, I always, not in a negative way, Stacey, but I I always feel it's, it's just a massive population of just really good people just looking for solutions. But the community is underserved in various ways. And on some of these big uh, boards, like the Dexcom boards, a lot of people would go out there and they would post, you know, whatever they were selling, whether it would be as a hobby, as a business, just to support their type one child, whatever it may be. And I think this one board had maybe 30,000 people on it, massive, you know, community. Are you talking about a Facebook group? A Facebook group. Yep. I'm sorry. Yep. Yep. And, you know, the moderator said, you know, look, I'm really sorry, but we can't have these solicitations or posts anymore. And somebody else posted up there, you know, that's fine. You know, he he put a comment on his post saying, well, look, you know, we started this little other community and, uh, you know, you could go ahead and buy and sell on Facebook right here. And I went to that community as well. Anyway, you know, and you saw people just trying to go ahead and solution and sell their goods. You, you saw people looking for them. And I said, you know, this is great, but there's got to be a better way that we can bring this community together and make the transactions easier. And that's how sort of the whole concept uh, came to be, Stacey. Yeah. So tell me what it is. This is like a flea market almost in one place <laughs> for all the diabetes goods and services. Maybe flea market isn't the best word. No, it's, it's okay. I mean, that's, that's actually that is exactly how we started. And, and, we started, and so we started you know, talking to some of these people on these boards. We said, you know, look, you, you, if you want to take it a step further, you know, we'll handle the transactions for you and, and just go ahead and post it up. And uh, people started started doing that. And we started getting a little bit of traction. The first site we rolled out was really, really terrible. And <laughs> eventually it was terrible. It was awful. It really did look like a flea market actually, Celeste, right? <laughs> yeah. But if you think about it, a flea market has multiple vendors all trying to sell products. And so, yeah, actually flea market is not a bad term for what we had at the very beginning. I like a good flea market. I don't know, maybe that's not the best term. We, we need a better phrase for it. Marketplace. 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 Yes. I mean, even eBay, they call it flea bay, right? You ever heard that term? But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it started out pretty awful, uh, Stacy. And, you know, as we started going, uh, at, at least the design, the concept was always there. People loved it. And we had some really early adopters, despite the design and the look and feel of the site. And uh, we, we started talking to some of the larger companies and the larger companies said, you know, we're excited about the idea. We love the concept of bringing everything together in one place, almost like a you know, an Amazon and everything store for type one diabetics, which is really how we started to head. But we don't, you know, want to, you know, we want you to just put up everything for us. We want you to sort of host it for us and take care of the business. And we just want to be sort of a, uh, we want you to be a marketing outlet for us. And that that's how we've transitioned. And now, Stacey, we handle 
we handle everything. We handle the, the really small guys that are, are selling, you know, like these decorated vials or patches or they have these uh, seatbelt alerts. Yes, yeah, yeah, stickers. stickers. A ton of people, stickers on Etsy for their kids. And then, you know, we uh, move all the way up to the, uh, to the bigger guys that have, you know, these really high-end diabetic bags and accessories for supplies, you know, the, the insulin cases, the, uh, um, you know, cases for the various pumps, things like that. So, you know, the idea is, is to get everything under the sun uh, type one diabetes. So all of us, all the community can go to one place and find sort of the solutions that they need. The main goal I think is to have people be able to share their solutions with others in the type one community and provide a place to do that someplace. Even if you don't have your own website, you can get your own storefront on our website. So you could start out with that and then move on to a, a more, you know, larger company setup where we have a drop ship option. It's really for all, not just for large companies. And I won't ask you to play favorites. I know everything on the website is fabulous. <laughs> but have you found anything that you're using? I mean, I'm not, I'm not seeing any glittery stickers on you. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a really simple guy, right? I, so I, I don't use uh, much in the way of, uh, of anything, actually. Just I, I keep the basics. Um, although, I, you know, I will say I really tend to favor uh, some of the patches out there because, you know, I have uh, constant, like everybody does with the, I wear Omnipod, I wear Dexcom, uh, that does tend to peel away. And some of the, uh, you know, some of the CGM patches and the Omnipod patches are really great solutions when you've tried everything else like skin tack and stuff like that. Yeah, those, uh, those patches seem to uh, really help. Beyond that, as Celeste mentioned, I, I want to say, Stacy, the creativity of some of these people on 3D printers, engineers making cases. As Les said, somebody came up with a design to prevent compression lows where you, um, you know, put basically a, uh, almost like a case around your Dexcom and you sleep with that. And that seems to help. We've got uh, people out there. We just onboarded a, uh, a, a new business uh, the other day that, that actually, if the adhesives, if the uh, patches don't work well for you, he's actually got a little, a little belt to go around and secure it, or if you're really active. So that seems to uh, help as well. So I, you just see all kinds of different, really cool stuff out there. And I think that's part of the magic as well, Stacy. is there's so many questions out there. What is the solution for this? How can I help this? And you get shipped to all these different places and sites. It's not really in one place and people don't always really know where to go. And now we can present all these options to the type one world. I wanted to just throw something in there as well. Uh, we are worldwide. We have a global type one community. And a lot of times when I'm looking at products, I'm finding different products over in Europe and in Australia and some other countries that I have not seen here in the U.S. yet. And if people aren't searching for something in particular, they, are ne they may never know what's out there to be able to solve their problem. You'll ship like if I see something I love in Australia. Well, the cool thing is, is we actually don't carry any inventory. We're only drop shippers. So the companies choose where they will offer their products to, where they will ship them to. And a lot of companies will ship to the US or will ship to Australia, Europe. UK is very big on our, on our community as well. So the more countries that they're able to ship to, the, the more, obviously, the more sales they'll get and the more they'll be able to share their products with other people who can use them around the world. And I want to say as well, Stacey, it's clearly listed on, on each of the listings where, where the shipping is, but we will always go ahead and reach out for somebody. If somebody asks us if, uh, you know, if they can ship to their particular country, we'll certainly go ahead and contact the vendor and ask them. You know, we want to try to do what we can where we can for both parties. And to be clear, this is a business for you all. So you are making money on this. We are. Okay. Just... Very little, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, compared, compared to the amount of work. What are you making, Celeste? Five, 10 cents an hour? <laughs> oh my goodness. Not even, not even, but it's okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I just want to be clear that the way it's set up is that, you know, the, you are going to make money on the transactions and that kind of thing. We, we are. Yeah. We're a mission driven organization in the sense that we want to serve the type one community, but I, I mean, it's a for-profit business for sure. I, I mean, as with any startup, Stacey, I mean, uh, most of that gets, most of it, all of it gets dumped right back into getting the word out, advertising, uh, listing, you know, and, and basically soliciting uh, right back out to the community. Yeah. Well, you've heard the podcast. I have sponsors. I have no issue with ethically making money as long as everybody's upfront and clear as you all are. So yes, yes. 
part of the community aspects of all of this, Stacey, is we want, as you know, you just asked, uh, you know, we're making money. Of course, there's uh, markups between, you know, what we, uh, you know, what it's sold for, um, you know, and what we pay. And we're trying to give a lot of that right back to the community. So we start an affiliate program where if affiliates want to go ahead and sell for us, they can easily sign up on the website and they'll get a piece of uh, whatever is sold out there. So, you know, that's one of many ways that we're trying to get the word out and, and keep the money in the community. And maybe, you know, one other thing to mention as well here, Stacy, is we, we don't want to limit uh, the marketplace in, in any way to products. We're already talking with um, diabetic uh, coaches out there. Uh, we talked with somebody just the other day that does lessons uh, or rather uh, gets together uh, kids groups. Right. Social groups for diabetic children. Yeah. Yeah. And we've already talked with people that work with uh, type one uh, diabetic groups for travel as well. You know, after the whole COVID thing is over, we'd like to get into all of these things. So, you know, people can come to one site and say, you know, hey, I can travel or I can send my kid to a group or maybe I need nutrition counseling or fitness coaching. And I could buy a set of CGM patches at the same time if I need those. And Adam, how are you doing? You mentioned you're using an Omnipod, you've got a Dexcom. So it sounds like you're, you've come quite a long way from worrying about checking your blood sugar once or twice a day. <laughs> well, I've got the uh, handy two liter there, right? Just in case. No, I, I don't know. I was born with a, uh, a very obsessive personality, Stacey. So I have to admit he does do well. That's nice to hear. I tend to keep pretty good control. I want to say that part of my retirement from my workplace is probably going to have to be annuitized turned into lifetime income, Stacey. I intend to live till 150 just to get all of my money right out of that uh, workplace. Very nice. You got it. You got it. So I tend to do okay. I, I'm pretty regimented. I, I know you know what I eat and what I, it does to my blood sugars. I, I live a pretty boring lifestyle as far as food. I put my energy into business and, and the kids who run me uh, relatively ragged. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Sure. Actually, I have to say he, he has simplified my life because he does eat almost the same meals for breakfast and for dinner and lunch is our main meal with his protein at lunch. So I can't complain so much. He actually does keep things very simple for me. That's the difference of having perhaps a husband with type one and a son. As we were saying before the interview started, I'm not exactly sure what my son is eating, what hour of the day, especially with virtual school eating Chinese food at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes. That sounds like our tweens, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's what they were into last night. Well, Adam and Celeste, thank you so much for joining me. It's great to talk to you and learn more about this. I'll link everything up so that people can learn more and start snooping around the website and maybe contacting you if they have products. We have some very creative people in the audience as well. But thanks for sharing your stories. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks so much for your time, Stacey. We really appreciate it. You're listening to Diabetes Connections with Stacey Sims. Lots more information, as always, at the episode homepage. Just go to diabetes-connections.com. And I like to say every so often, if you are looking for a previous show or a topic that we covered, if you go to the website, I have a search box on the upper right-hand side. It's a really robust search. We have 365 episodes. There's a lot of stuff out there. If you'd like to hear something, Many of the newer episodes have transcripts, not the older ones yet. We're working on that. But it's just a really easy way to go through what I hope is a good source of information and sort of what I kind of call it a snapshot of the history of the diabetes community for the past five, almost six years. Um, certainly not exhaustive, but a really good snapshot of what's been going on in our community since 2015. So definitely check that out at the homepage. Tell Me Something Good is coming up. We have a teen and young adult edition this week. But first, Diabetes Connections is brought to you by Dexcom. And I just want to take a moment to talk about Control IQ. This is the Dexcom G6 tandem pump software program. When it comes to Benny's numbers, you know I hardly expect perfection. I just want him happy and healthy. I have to say, Control IQ, the software from Dexcom and Tandem, has exceeded my expectations. Benny is able to do less checking and bolusing and is spending more time in range. His last three A1Cs were his lowest ever. They keep going down. This isn't a teenager. The time when I was really prepared for him to be struggling. 
His sleep is better, too, with basal adjustments possible every five minutes. The system is working hard to keep him in range. And that means we hear far fewer Dexcom alerts, which means everybody's sleeping better. I'm so grateful for this. Of course, individual results may vary. To learn more, just go to diabetes-connections.com and click on the Dexcom logo. I went looking for good news stories in a Facebook group that is frequented by parents of teens and young adults. And I got some really fun stories to share with you. Catherine says, Noah is my type one spectrumy 16-year-old. He had his best report card since third grade, three A's and a B plus. He's on new meds, new therapist, a new school. Also doing remote school, so it's quick with reduced social anxiety, fewer distractions, and no papers to lose. He actually likes school this way. I got to say, I know this year has been very difficult, but remote school has been a boon for many kids. I don't know what we're going to do when things go back. It's not for me to say, but it would be really nice to figure out a compromise here for some kids like this that it's really working well for. Tammy says, my son Cole is a sophomore in college. He was diagnosed at age three and a half. He's now 20. He surfs, he rock climbs, he traveled to Cabo. He's MDI and uses a Dexcom. He ran on club teams. He was a varsity runner in track and cross country. Tracy posted about her daughter, Sophie, who was diagnosed at age nine. All she posted at first was a really cute picture of her daughter saying she finally got her job at Starbucks. So I had to say, uh, is there more to this story? I do not get it. So Tracy wrote back and said, she is a junior in high school and enjoyed bagging grocery at Publix, but her mean parents made her quit due to the pandemic. She has attended virtual school since last year, but missed working. She discovered Starbucks was safer because they only have a few people working there at a time and it's mostly drive through. It took weeks of email and calling and follow up work to make it happen. She just turned 17 on Sunday. So that's the story. And then Jessica writes in my 17 year old Trenton played in all three games at their state basketball tournament. He's their ninth guy. He even scored a basket. And she posted a really cute picture of Trenton with his parents. I'm going to grab these photos with permission and put them into the Facebook group because I think they're really fun, especially this one. I have two more good news stories for you. They're very different from one another. But this one is from Alex. And she writes, I was born and raised in Oregon, but I've lived in Argentina since the 90s. Our daughter was diagnosed a little over two years ago. And I learned that in Argentina, they have a diabetes law that guarantees access to insulin, strips, and all necessary technology for diabetes care as a human right. This law was achieved by a group of moms in 2013. While there are gaps in the system, there is a framework within which you claim access to what you need at a public hospital. The psychological relief, she writes, this law provides brings me no end of comfort. And I love that it was achieved by a group of moms. This is the photo of when Congress approved the law. And this is a great photo of moms cheering and hugging and crying. And there's one gentleman in the photo as well. <laughs> I will put that in the group. What a great story. I mean, wherever you come down on the side of access and insulin for all, and I know there are different political views, that's fine. You've got to really believe that the psychological stress of trying to afford this stuff is heavy on many, many, if not most people's minds. And I will leave you with a really fun one. And I don't know if she knows that this is kind of an anniversary. So here's the story. Leslie, who I have known for years, you may have heard me tell the story about when Benny was very little, another little boy was diagnosed right at the end of, gosh, I'm getting old now. Was it first or second grade? <laughs> I want to say it was the end of first grade. And Michael and Benny talked it over and everybody felt better about it. But Michael and Benny had also played baseball together. And Leslie posted a photo of Michael. Benny no longer plays baseball. He played lacrosse and then he's into then football and now he's, he's really into wrestling. But Michael stayed with it and it's done really well. And she posted a photo of Michael as an umpire. He is working as an umpire. And the picture is partial gear. This kid, you can't even see him. He's like buried in the equipment here. And she says he really enjoyed it. Calling home plate is more fun than the bases. I have a new appreciation for the discomfort umps must be in at games after the many layers required to put on. And I said it was an anniversary of sorts because it was this week. It's last week as you're listening. But this week when Leslie sent me the photo that Michael and Benny and another little boy, Parker, all played in a baseball game together. Two teams. This was our little town baseball league for elementary school. So a couple of towns, I guess, but two teams and three boys with type one diabetes all in the same game. 
And it showed up in my Facebook memories, which is how I know. So, Leslie, thanks for sending that in. Thank you all for these great good news stories. This is always my favorite part of the show. Send them in. You can email me, Stacy at diabetes-connections.com or post them in the Facebook group. Before I let you go, big thank you to JDRF Desert West, which includes chapters in Arizona, New Mexico, and Nevada. I participated in their Type 1 talk last week. And I really appreciate you having me out to talk about the world's worst diabetes mom. I am looking forward to an event with my local chapter, which I don't even know how big my local chapter is anymore. Maybe it's North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia, I think. But at the end of April, well, April 23rd, I will be hosting trivia. I'm very excited about this. We're going to have a big online, you know, Zoom, but play along trivia. And if you'd like to do something like that, I am more than happy to host it for your chapter, your diabetes group. If you've ever seen my silly game shows or listened to my game shows that I put out here, it's not dry trivia. We're not quizzing people. We're not going to do math problems on bolusing. It's lots of fun diabetes news. But, you know, in a, I'll give myself credit, in a comedic, it's lots of fun diabetes news, but in a fun, interesting, family-friendly kind of way. So I would love to do that. Get in touch. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. You can play over Zoom. Everybody needs a separate app on their phone. It's the Kahoot app that lots and lots of schools use. So your child probably already has that and can set you up if you don't have it yourself. All right. Lots of stuff coming up. Classic episode in a couple of days. And we are back to our interview shows on Tuesdays. So please join me then. Thanks as always to my editor, John Buchanan from Audio Editing Solutions. Thank you as always for listening. I'm Stacey Sims. I'll see you back here soon. Until then, be kind to yourself. Diabetes Connections is a production of Stacey Sims Media. All rights reserved, all wrongs avenged.